This is the first part out of a four-part video series showing how to use SOLIDWORKS Motion to simulate a packaging machine. In order to reduce the complexity of the analysis, a simplified version of the packaging machine was created. In this first part, the creation of the assembly will be shown. The machine moves the box on a conveyor belt at a constant speed. Sensors along the path trigger a plate to get released into the box along with a lid for the top of the box. When the complete box reaches the end of the conveyor belt, it goes onto a spring plate that brings it to a lower level. First, download all of the components needed for the assembly from the link at the bottom of this post. Open SOLIDWORKS and create a new assembly by going under File, New, and double clicking on Assembly. The Begin Assembly Property Manager window will appear on the left side of the screen. Click the Browse button and locate the machine-based part that was downloaded. Click Open and then OK in the Insert Component Property Manager. This will automatically align the part's origin with the assembly's origin. Next, click Insert Components and then add the box part into the assembly. Add a coincident mate between the box's front plane and the front plane in the assembly. Then add a coincident mate between the bottom of the box and the top of the conveyor. Click and drag the box so it is at the start of the packaging machine as illustrated here. Next, click Insert Components and insert the plate. Add two coincident mates between the side faces of the plate and the inside faces of the plate holder. Add a final coincident mate with the top of the plate and the top of the plate holder. These mates are just used to position the part and will be suppressed before performing the motion analysis. Insert the lid part and follow the same mating procedure that was used for the plate. Now insert the releasing plate part into the assembly. Add a coincident mate between the top of the plate and the top face of the releasing plate slot. Add a second coincident mate between the side edge of the releasing plate and the side face of the slot. Make sure to select the edge of the releasing plate. The combination of these two mates makes sure that there are no redundant mates between the releasing plate and the base. Redundant mates are when two mates remove the same degree of freedom from a component. Eliminating redundant mates helps to improve the accuracy of the motion analysis as well as to reduce the chance of errors. The mates used will still allow the plates to move back and forth in the slot. Repeat this exact procedure with the three other releasing plates. Next, add a coincident mate between the two inside end faces of the releasing plates so that they are now touching. Repeat this for the other pair of releasing plates. For the releasing plates underneath the plate, add a distance mate between one end of the releasing plate and the side of the base as shown. Set the separation distance to 3 inches. This will ensure that the plates are initially equally spaced from the center of the plate and will each open in the same amount of time. Repeat this with the other pair of plates, but set the offset distance to 1.75 inches. Finally, insert the balance plate and add a coincident mate between the side of the plate and the side of the cutout where it fits into. Add another coincident mate, but use an adjacent side of the cutout and a corresponding edge on the balance plate. This is similar to what was done with the releasing plates. Finally, add a third coincident mate between the top of the plate and the top of the conveyor belt. Expand the mates folder. While holding the control key down, select the mates used to mate the plate and the lid. Select the coincident mates between the two pairs of releasing plates and the distance mates as well. Also select the two concentric mates between the box and the conveyor. Finally select the coincident mate between the balance plate and the top of the conveyor. Right click on one of these and select add to folder. Rename it to say initial positions. This folder can now be suppressed by right clicking on it and clicking suppress. It can be used if ever the parts need to be reset to their original position. Make sure that you save your assembly. In the next part of this series, the motion study will be created.